Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, so face look kind of puffy today. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> anyway, yo, everything is everything, man. I woke up in a great deal of fear. When I say fear, I mean it. As soon as I opened my eyes, it rushed at my body like it was trying to attack me immediately. All of the anxieties, all of the worst feelings, all of the reality of my circumstances. It it it, it made sure that it caught me as soon as I woke up this morning. And so you know I. I looked at that and I said, all right, I'm in a space where a lot of the things that I've been afraid of have to do with me being stuck in the house. I ain't afraid to be stuck in the house right now. I've been taking these walks every day for a matter of two hours a day for the last seven days. So whatever's out there, not only am I not afraid of it, but I can't wait to get out there to walk because I really love doing it that much. So what else, what else am I afraid of? Circumstances I haven't heard, heard from my uncle, so I don't know how much money I will be able to have for my circumstance. Uh, may have to sell out of my entire position to take care of myself if I don't get assistance. Fearful. Okay. Fair. That's what it is. I also have um, a fear about, obviously, the circumstance itself. Am I going to be able to get a place to stay in time? Obviously, I got to be out of here by the 22nd. Uh, so that was the truth. I was able to get that information. I thought it was the 21st, but according to the letter, it said the 22nd. So that's an extra day. Praise God. Um Am I afraid about not being able to sell certain things? Well, I probably have them priced too high. I can bring down the prices on some of the things that I'd like to sell, but there's also a solution in regards to the things that I have. I, the storage place was found yesterday along with the U-Haul. That's an option that will allow me to at least keep myself somewhere, my stuff somewhere, and maybe even have them, you know, when we sell, I can sell it while it's in storage, have somebody, you know, we can have it picked up from storage and have it sold out that way. So that's probably going to be how I try to do it. Um, and, and let God kind of work that out. And then everything else is just about the anxiety of not being comfortable, having not been able to reach out to the people that needed to be reached out in regards to the links that I've been receiving and looking for all of the different housing stuff. I haven't been able to do that these last two days because it's been the weekend. I woke up this morning. It's Monday. When that fear hit me, I realized that I had the opportunity to reach out to some people that maybe I've been wanting to reach out to for the last two days. And turn that into something that took away a little bit of that fear. It's like, all right, well, I can do something about that. I can, I can take the numbers and the links that I have and contact all of them, email all of them. So that's what I just did. Uh, I, I got myself up, breakfast, shower, came back in here, and I felt like making content. But I, I said, you know what, Lord, I don't want to use my fear to waste time. I make an hour therapy session listen to it for an hour, look up, and it's like 10 o'clock. I don't want to do that. So let me contact who I need to contact first. Give me the mental fortitude, strength of mind to contact everybody that needs to be contacted. And then from there, we can continue to move in a direction that allows me to be most, most productive in regards to this time restraint of my circumstances. So that's what I did. Before turning on this camera right now, I contacted about maybe three or four numbers that had been sent to me by my sister emailed about three or four people that were attached to those same links uh committed to what i have to do today which is walk down to uh the inglewood housing authority i don't know if i have to set an appointment or not they're not open yet so i'm gonna wait for them to get back to me in regards to that um but that's going to be the day's walk i'm going down to the housing authority it's about 37 minutes away 37 minute walk back i walk two hours a day so that's going to be fun for me that's not even going to be a task so um you know, it's, it's close. I think it's in the same place. To, uh, if I honestly think that the housing authority may actually be in there with the uh, the court, the court that I came from, it looked like it's the same little area. So that should not be a task for me at all. And I'm just going to go in there and let my light shine, just like my sister told me. You know, it's not that I'm down and out. It's just that I found myself in a situation where the choices that I made to coddle my mindset and my mental health uh, it's cost me yet again, and this isn't the first time it's happened. This is about the third time this has happened. So I'm just ready to address it in a way that uh, finally gets it addressed. I don't ever want to fall into this again, and I don't want to quit. You know, I, I don't want to do what my mind told myself I would want to do when it get to this point. I want to address it. I want to face the challenge. And if I got to live in some uncomfortable circumstances, then uh, that will be what the prayers will help me do. So as far as everything else, I'm looking forward to putting this life in this apartment behind me. However, hook a crook, pull me out of here, whatever. I'm going to be on the 22nd. Hope, I hope that not only am, is my body gone, but my mind and my spirit and all these concerns that I have right now are gone. And, and, and the next thing I want to do is, is land somewhere and then proceed to take the interest that I have now walking and expand upon it. 
get back to what will help me stabilize my life of uh, pushing my channel pushing my laker videos getting the mental health treatment that ultimately will most give me the uh, the clarity to move like i need to um and then just from there letting god gather uh whatever support will be coming my way to help me become what it is that i'm going to become and bring it to me or help me get to it my mother always told me to ask the lord to surround me with his people so i'm going to tell you guys that that's what i hope that you are able to receive as well that that you have all of his people in your position to help you through uh this moment whether it be dark or light times that you have his folks around watching your best interests in heart so that's really what it was i didn't want to come here in vain before doing what needed to be done and then come to you guys talking about how the lord is going to help me do it i need to do some things first let him help me and then report back to you on what it is that he's shown me and what he's shown me is that uh, the housing authority number that's attached to the la branch is a spam number that's what i'm here to tell you the la branch of the hud offices the housing authority as soon as you call them they're talking about you got a, a gift card that they want to give you and they don't allow you to connect with anyone until you press one on that gift card now the inglewood branch don't have that problem and i didn't call any other branches because i'm not i probably should call long beach just in case but the L.A. branch, it goes directly to a spam count number. So that's what I learned. That's what I'm telling y'all. Uh, they got to fix that. They got to fix it now because they still have that number attached to the official stuff. And people are calling it and they're getting that spam energy and no link to contact anybody. And for that to be greater Los Angeles number, probably the most important one, unacceptable. Uh, so that's what I wanted to say there. Um, but other than that, man, I'm just so thankful. I'm going to tell y'all that my sister, she gave me all those links and I, and I contacted all of the ones that she gave me sent emails and everything before anybody's open it's 7 35 in the morning i've been up since five fresh and so as the attack of fear and anxiety hit me so was the attack and the strike back at it by doing what i'm supposed to do uh to the best of my ability from within this situation it's monday i got until next thursday to be out all of my things and myself need to be gone forever by next Thursday. I am in the agreement that I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that that is the case, whether I am able to get the monetary help from my family or not. I'm going to do everything I got to do to save myself because I, what I've been doing is sitting down waiting for things to go wrong, countdowns and everything, just waiting for things to happen, coddling myself scared, and I just know that that is not going to get better unless I make it better. I'm not going to get help for my support unless I get that help for myself. <laughs> and so I'm ready. I'm ready. I would have done it this week. In fact, I plan on doing it as soon as I'm able to stabilize where my next address will be. I'm going to set up an appointment for that. Also, uh, I set myself up for a bus pass. They, they give away free bus passes or something like that for people with the income where I'm at. Uh, so I applied for that. And unfortunately, they're talking about it's not going to arrive or, you know, in the mail until 10 days from now 10 days from now i'm gone so it ain't gonna be <laughs> that's not gonna work for me but at least i was approved for it so what i'll probably try to do today is try to find myself a a, a tap card um you know what i mean i know how to do that that just go to the train station and just buy one so that's that's not gonna cost but like two three dollars honestly it, it, if it's still what it was so not worried about that but uh just just being out and about getting getting myself used to moving around again uh, it's it's been great these last couple of days. I felt probably as good as I felt in years, and so I just want to tell everybody what I'm doing. I don't know what this call is from Texas, but I'm not expecting a phone call from Texas. It's probably a bill collector. I'm not going to stop my content for that. But um, yeah, man, it's just one of those situations where it, 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 the God's honest truth is this: I got attacked this morning in a way that usually leaves me stagnant. My my mental health came to me in ways that <clears throat> it hadn't come to me in probably over a year in terms of the fear that rushed into my head this morning. Not not that intense. And the funny thing is, all things considered, with the information that I was able to pick up with U-Haul yesterday and the various different things that are going on, I actually should be a little less fearful because I have a little more direction. And so it's one of those situations where I just knew that was an attack. That wasn't nothing but the enemy trying to test to see if I'm still who I was last week in the time prior. And to be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not that guy, man. Those anxieties will come, but so will the prayers to meet them. So will the intensity and the uh, 
the effort to meet them. I've been too far into the Holy Spirit, too far into good energy, sacrificing lustful energy ever since this happened with the intent of staying closer to God. I am not doing anything that I think he would be unhappy with right now. And so with that being said, I just want to address the problems with the energy that he's given me based on that, that truth. you giving me energy. The enemy doesn't have any space in my heart when I'm not engaging in any sin whatsoever. When I'm trying to legitimately do for myself so that I can put myself in a position to do better for others. And so it, it's not going to be a matter of me failing because failure is a choice. You can either walk with that anxiety down that path toward an activity or you can come uh, toward the Lord the way I've been doing these last several days and allow him to provide me the blessings that cannot come if I stand and wait. And so the stagnation that used to come from feeling those anxieties and coddling them will now be met with a different energy. Uh, so long as the Lord continues to give me the courage to remember that in the moment, and that is exactly what he's done. I asked him before I turned on the camera. My intentions were to turn on the camera before making those calls and everything. And I asked him, I said a prayer, to, look, you know what I need to do. You know what sin is in regards to this. Wasting that time that I was telling you I would have done, making the content as long as I would have been listening to it, killing hours, that's not going to help my situation. If I get in the rhythm of that this week, I'll find myself without what I need. So, Lord, give me the mental fortitude to not use my followers on YouTube as an excuse to not follow the direction that you're giving me so that I can give them something to follow in regards to fighting my uh, anxieties and hopefully fighting whatever it is they're facing, too. Faith without works is dead, is what I've been told. And I'm ready to put in the work that aligns with that faith. Because if you're putting in the faith, the Lord should make it so that you're able to put in that work. It's not going to be a situation where then you're going to be asked by yourself after applying that faith to garner the strength necessary to do the work. That's what no one ever told me. The work is hard in and of itself without the faith. But once you get the faith, now the work should be more doable. You should have the confidence that you can put more effort into building yourself up to where that work isn't as much of a challenge for you. And that is what was missing for me. Someone needed to say those words to me so I understood what it was responsible because I would always pray, but when it came to the work, the anxiety would keep me from doing the work. The anxiety would keep me from doing whatever it is that would otherwise help me get what I need. And so as I stand before you today, I say I still have those intense conditionings in my mind to kind of coddle and sit back and not do nothing, be weak. But the reality is I'm faced with something that allows for none of that. And because of it, acceptance is also in place. So this is where I'm at. I'm, 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 I'm waiting for them to call me back which is something i'm not too comfortable with but i'm also taking the time today to be as consistent as i need to be so that my channel can remain what it needs to be uh and that is also a big part of what we're doing just like i said yesterday if you're going to live your life you can't live it to only do what has to be done you got to find ways of doing what it is you love to do so you can remind yourself that you're living a life that you're supposed to be enjoying that you're supposed to be doing certain things in and what comes naturally to me is the content for the lakers content for this obviously playlists obviously art and even more so just just poetry as well too and so i haven't been doing all of my art forms in the presence of this crisis and the sooner i get my stability back the sooner i can pour more into the art forms that i love so i thank the lord for the timing of which the lakers are off season so i can handle my business go through all these problems get myself where i need to go ultimately land somewhere and to get back to what it is that we do hopefully or at least adjust to it in the way that will be necessary so that I'm not thinking that I can still do it the way I used to. Whatever the case may be, I'm looking forward to getting back to what I do next season. And, uh, you know what I mean? That's what it is. I, 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 am, I suffer mental health concerns that kept me from making decisions that should work for me. And those concerns make it so that I have to lean into faith in a way that otherwise uh, may not be something that I would have if I didn't have these mental health concerns. It makes me look at myself. And change certain things about my wiring instead of just accepting certain things as if they're perfect because they're attached to me. And I appreciate that need to self-balance or so to speak or to, to address uh, certain things that are like really, really foreign for other people to have to even address within themselves because of the self-confidence of being sane and the self-confidence of, of, of just knowing yourself and knowing what you've been through. But sometimes you have to reroute the wiring. Sometimes things have been in your head for too long that shouldn't have been there and if you're like me just by necessity you're going to have to take a look at everything and those things will be addressed as well so that's where we're at man we're appreciating the disadvantage that that has been in place those anxieties and those attacks that come from just being 
what we we've been and we appreciate the challenge that comes with knowing that we can fight those attacks with something greater than what they are coming at us with and we will win those battles and we will be more productive and we will exterminate those demons as they come and so that's what i'm encouraging everybody who has anxiety uh to do you put your prayer first prayers first because then you will have what you need to feel as confident as you need to to have your spirit in place to combat that anxiety but get your prayer first and then take the steps necessary to do whatever you have to do with your task with the understanding that you have support on high you have someone who has your back who will allow you to see clearly put aside those counterproductive energies that are otherwise attacking you and focus on the solutions to the problems I listened to something that G. Erbo said uh, it was a little clip that just popped up on my phone and motivational as I'm looking on IG and it popped up and he said you know I don't think about the problems I don't, I don't worry about what the problems is at all I just look for the solutions and handle them right now and that is exactly what I needed to hear those words because that's exactly what it is that that I don't do often I look at the problem and then I I fear the problem and try to protect myself in otherwise comfortable spaces to keep from addressing whatever those fears are that's not where we had no more now we're like all right I got the Holy Spirit with me and I got the wisdom that was provided me from young Erbo to say there are solutions and those are the things that are going to ultimately really provide me the blessing that the Lord wants me to have that's going to really provide me a defense against those anxieties. Not necessarily coddling myself in the moment, putting off the fears, uh, results, whatever it is that you're afraid of, but more so addressing what it is you're afraid of and making sure that you defeat the demon that's coming at you in that way. And so, like I said many times, I've never had a diagnosis. I've never had any treatment for my anxiety. And it's been chronic and it's been bad and it's cost me everything. And yet without that treatment i still have to apply a way to get out of this proper this problem this circumstance and so there's no one who knows me that well other than a few of my friends who have already helped me and family who's already helped me to really take my word for it i look like i'm okay for the most part when i speak to people i obviously have the ability to communicate well i don't have a problem as it pertains to my appearance it's, it's in here and it, it is often in ways as cruel <clears throat> as it is to me, often in ways that aren't going to be detected by others at all. And that's why I've been able to skate throughout my life as somebody who's been okay and been, held, you know, people have kind of just let it be. But <clears throat> I know what I've been faced with. I know what I'm struggling with. I know what's been kicking my butt all life long. I know how I've handled it. And I just know that there has to be something that's not here in here to fix it. Now, what I wrestle with is because I really genuinely never want to do security again genuinely find myself being somebody who doesn't want to do certain things that I've already done for many years I'm hopeful that maybe the diagnosis itself can help monetize my situation so I don't have to do those things that I hate to do but the reality is I think that that's only a halfway point necessity I should be able to psych myself into going back to work and doing what I need to do it's just for how long with this condition how long it's not about whether I can go back it's about how long will I stay as focused as I need to be without treatment um, and the answer is the pattern would tell me probably about three years the pattern tells me three years depending on how well I like the job and so that's really what it is it's like I don't want to go fall back into that pattern I'm already almost 40 I don't want to give three years to something that I'm, that's not going to elevate me especially when I do things on my own that I think can channel art all that playlist so it's like there are things that I want to do. I want direction. If I'm going to get back into a job, I want to see an exit plan from that. And that's what I never have, an exit plan from those circumstances, which is why I just end up just fading away in those jobs. It just There's never any reason for me to truly keep going as it pertains to what I'm building toward. So I think that's the difference. But I really have prayed a lot of prayers to keep myself out of security. I genuinely don't want to do it again, even without the mental health concerns. I would much rather live my life without ever having to do that. And so... I'm open to the Lord giving me a, a change in my condition in regards to that opinion, if if it's most necessary, or I'm looking forward to him giving me a better job that doesn't require me jumping back into circumstances that I really would rather not. Whatever the case may be, I'm open, and I think that whatever would otherwise make it so that I am closed uh, is something that I no longer welcome in Jesus' name. So that's the most important thing. Anything that would otherwise close me off from opening uh, my doors you know, to, to the most happy uh, path, 
is something that I, I really want to do away with. As I told you guys, you can start in the toilet and end up in the Maldives. But if you never find yourself willing to even sit in that toilet, you are definitely not going to end up in the Maldives. And so because of that wisdom in my heart, um, I no longer want to be as close to things that I genuinely don't want to do. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to do those things. To be honest with you, I desperately, desperately, desperately would never, would rather never do security again. And so for those who are praying for me, that's definitely a prayer to pray. See to it that I can find a way to be employed or get the inf money that I need without having to jump into the toilet to get to the Maldives. Because that ain't the only way to the Maldives. So, um, and, and the Maldives ain't the only place to be at the end. So there's a lot of different things that I would love to see myself do. A lot of things I would love to see myself be a part of. And this is the start of that, I believe. But more than anything else, I would love to never have to tell people after this that I'm undiagnosed. I don't ever want to, like, because I never thought that a diagnosis was that important because I never thought that I needed anything that came with the diagnosis. If anything, I was more so fearful that it would pump me full of drugs and leave me a sedated zombie without a compassion in my heart or a creative thought in my head. That is what I need to combat against. And so that's what I've been combating against in regards to not getting help. It's like, all right, they're just going to pump me full of drugs. Or the mindset of I never needed it. Like, I'm not really sick. I just go through anxiety sometimes, and that anxiety gets the best of me, but not identifying that as a mental illness at all, just out of sheer ignorance. So now that I'm in this space where I'm, I'm cognizant of what I'm dealing with, I know that it's a disadvantage, but I also know that I have the strength within my faith to kind of fight it. At the end of the day, I think it should be something that shouldn't be there at all. And so if there's some worldly way that I can address it or if there's some type of support for that, some group therapy that can help me through my, my issues or even a comparison person that can help me understand how they handle what it is that I'm going through, that would be great because I honestly don't know of anyone who's ever had what it is that I feel I'm going through. Anxiety ain't the only thing. It's a lot of different stuff that, that, that plagues my mind and that keeps me stagnant and keeps me choosing things that ultimately don't give me the best path. And after 38 years and with nothing to show for it, uh, I'm ready to do, do away with that if at all possible. Unfortunately, it feels like I live in a time where they just don't really care too much about people like myself. That's what it feels like. Uh, God loves me. Family loves me. I love myself. But it looks like the world doesn't necessarily feel like a warm place for people who have this concern. And so that's what I hope to open up the opportunity for to be the first that people can be fathom, fathoming a new version of what mental health people are really about. We don't have to be slow. We don't have to be diabolical looking to do crazy things from within a sane mind uh, that looks sane. You know what I mean? Not all of us are Dahmer. Just because we're functional doesn't mean that we actually want to harm people. But we still deal with enough that harms us that makes it so that we're at a disadvantage in life. And I think I'm one of those guys. Like, I, I look and appear fine, but I'm not. But I'm also not some diabolical dude that wants to cut you up. It's like it's somewhere before that gets that bad is where I actually find myself to where I'm not like that. But it's just, it's still something that you know, on the inside is torturous. On the outside, it looks absolutely okay. You know what I mean? So that's why I want people to understand. It's like, I, I have the right intentions as it pertains to what I think should work. I would never suggest anybody do what I've done if they want to see themselves happy. You know what I mean? I would never suggest you stay home and coddle yourself, make yourself feel better by not doing anything and just close the blinds and, and protect yourself from all your anxieties. I would never let people, uh, you know, over leverage themselves into something that could work out for them and then proceed to let their money just sit in it and let it go all the way down. Like these are things that I did. I would never let somebody uh, have someone give them something um, over, you know, throughout bereavement, your mother give you an inheritance or something like that, and then you just sit in the house for three years and let it dwindle to nothing while you dread it the whole time. Like, that's what I w went through in my mind. I didn't take any of my mom's money and invest in myself. I didn't take any of my mom's money and travel to see people or go to places I wanted to go or none of that. I sat, I held on to it for three years while working a job that I hated, let that job get me to a point where I couldn't do it no more or whatever when the car accident happened. Uh, the car flipped. I couldn't go back to work couple of people said no to me in regards to helping me and I went into a deep depression that allowed me to stay in the house and let all all of my mother's money just disappear without as much as upgrading my computer getting myself some clothing or nothing I just smoked weed played video games <clears throat> gave all of that money to the rental people that ultimately are kicking me out right now they got all of my mom's money because that's what I was doing paying rent and 
it's just one of those situations where this is where it led me to. I enjoyed all of those times where I was coddling myself, but at the end of the day, it just ended up with me having seven days, to, 10 days to leave and no car, no money, nothing to show for it. And I've had that. I had that. I had my mom's money and I had AMC at one point when it's at its highest. Those are both things that could have retired my situation if I would have parlayed them properly. But it's just, it was never even a choice because my mind was too busy caught up in the way it was and it wasn't helping and I didn't have my spirit where it needed to be where it is right now to where the Lord could su suggest certain things to me that would course me away from that now what he tells me is did you see that you had it you had it and I gave it to you again and I'll give it to you again and so that's what he's telling me now it's like this that wasn't the last bag you're gonna get that wasn't the only way it's gonna work you're going to earn your own money. You're not waiting for nobody to give you a handout anymore. You have all the tools to make yourself some some real money. And so that's what he's telling me. It's like, look, your past didn't have your works attached to it. All of those people that were quitting those jobs didn't have no direction, no, no channel, no people following their every word and, and listening to them on, chan on this. None of that was going on. I was a video game player, and a good portion of those times was spent lusting and playing video games in isolation and it was no good. Smoking weed, not allowing myself to communicate with people that love me, not allowing myself to date or have a chance at a family. Just sitting here and wasting away. That is not who I'm going to be going back out there. That's not what it is I'm about. This channel is well up and underway. My playlist, plentiful, art, all of my styles can be duplicated and done better. I made two of my best art pieces yesterday. Absolutely yesterday. So I'm getting better at that. I'm not who I was, and I got to know that as I continue to assess who I'm going to be in these situations. I'm starting to pray the Lord, give me my car again. You know what I mean? I want my car. And not to say that I want a car um, because I, I'm just so excited about driving around. I want a car because now I'm excited about putting myself in a position to make that car make sense in the life that I'm living. I can go different places I refuse to go. It don't just have to be me going to a job I hate coming home and being... Uh, you know, trying to enjoy that time before doing it again. There's a purpose to all that I'm doing from here on out. And so that's what I'm hopeful for, leaving all the anxiety and the ways that have me waking up in the morning thinking I don't have any responsibilities, thinking that not planning things is fine, thinking that, you know, the Lord, taking breaks from the Lord and going toward lust energy is any good for me. None of that's going to get me to where it is that will ultimately make me well. Well. And these last seven days, I've been fighting any and utter any sicknesses that would otherwise be entering my heart with faith. And it's allowed me to minister to you guys and preach, or should I say to you guys. And it's, it's been helping me greatly. So I'm not that person I used to be, although I fight with the same demons he does. I'm much more equipped to defeat them. And I want you guys to know that you are a big part of that. You are a big part of that. The notion that somebody on the other end is watching me, trying to see me do better, it gives me just enough to say... I can't get on this camera without having something done for the day. I can't get on here and just tell them, God will do it, God will do it, and I'm not doing it. So that's what I did. I made all the phone calls. It's about to be 8 o'clock now. Hopefully these people start calling me back, emailing me back, getting me all the information I need to give myself a place to stay in to get the help that I ultimately need. I need mental health help. God is with me. I love him, and I'm going to stay with him, and I'm asking him to get me that help. I'm not an invalid. I'm not incapable. In fact, it's complete opposite. I'm very capable. You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. I'm very smart. I'm, I'm very, very open-minded. It just pertains to being able to help others. And so it's it's a disadvantage because of the times I'm in and the understanding of what it is I'm dealing with. 70 years from now, people like me will be empowered to be better. I know it because I'm going to make sure of it. And so that's where it is, man. I want you guys to understand that it's going to be because you took my image and your understanding of what I'm going through and you parlayed it into something that could help people. Uh, that's why 70 years from now, I believe people like me are going to be in a much better space because I'm going to be the suggestion that to say we exist. We exist. Some of us are fine in our ability to appear to you fine. Maybe you can't see that we understand that we're doing things the wrong way. Maybe you can't see that we're, do we're dreading the idea of our money dwindling into nothing. That was hell for me. Just like waiting on... AMC has been hell for me. Just like waiting for them to kick me out of my apartment has been hell for me. Everything I've had to wait for that has ultimately led to something I didn't like, it's been hell for me. And the initiation to work against that 
is foreign to me based on what it is it was required to protect myself from those fears and now I realize it's not required but I'm fortunate enough to have faith if I did not have faith which many do not they're going to need something else and that something else is going to have to come from you it's going to have to come from those who are doing already and I, and, and I thank all of those people who have already started these processes the links that I've been able to receive they started from people who wanted something more for them for the for the world in regards to homelessness wanted something more for this area in regards to homelessness so i thank everybody who's given us these opportunities uh to get on our feet because a lot of us genuinely need it and will genuinely propel ourselves to being as useful as well so i i feel like i'm living a very anointed life the struggles that i have were not given to me without the Lord wanting to connect with me on these levels. So I just ask that he help me deal with these feelings more so as to say there's an acceptance to these energies. I can welcome the Lord to help me through these energies and the anxiety doesn't have to win these battles anymore. Uh, the feelings of, of, of I can't do it or I don't want to do it or I'm waiting for something bad to happen even though I don't want it to happen can be met with some prayer, can be met with some acts against that. And so the, while it wasn't meant for me to be able to do that, up until this point, it is now meant for me to tell you that and apply it if possible. And it is very possible. So that's my intention. Um, so, yeah, that's what I want to tell you guys. I don't know if the Lord has anything else he wants me to say in regards to this video. Um, I'm just thankful that everybody's been checking me out, following me, man. I want people to know that it's no urgency for you to watch all of these. Um, check them out when the Lord puts it in your heart to do so or when you decide you want to hear something I got to say. But I, I was listening to my friend Bronze talk about she's been so busy she can't watch him. Uh, somebody else also, she was, she was telling me her friend, she's not sure if she's been able to watch him. But it's just one of those situations like, look, there's a lot of hours here with these therapy sessions. Um, and I don't I don't think that that it's it's important that everybody, uh, you know, just listen to all of them all the time. I don't know how other people, content creators, expect people to take in their content. But I just expect people to click on me when they have a chance and then move on because that's what I do. Uh, you know, I don't. Sometimes I don't even watch the whole content. I just get from it what I can and move on. So I don't want people to think that I don't want you to watch the whole thing because there's always stuff in these things that I think are extremely important. But I think you'll come back to it when it's time. And so, you know, right now I just want you to know that I'm leaving these here for us all, forever. It don't. It ain't meant for these times. A lot of the content that's meant uh, to be made right now is instant content. And granted, we talk about you know topics that have to do with the current times on this therapy sessions thing but most of what i leave here i expect to be here long after i'm done with these problems long after i'm gone from the earth and i want the, the, the messages and the teachings in these things and the things that the lord has put in my heart and the various different stuff that i've talked about throughout the 300 plus of these things i want the people the people to have these thoughts in their mind when they when it's time for them to have it so I ask the Lord, just make it so that I get to as big as I need to be so that people can reflect on this era, check out these therapy sessions, and work them into their equation in their lives. Because a lot of what I've dealt with here, I think it help a lot of us survive. I really believe that. Um, so that's what the Lord has put into my heart. There's no pressure from this person for you to hear everything I've ever said or go back and watch all that. No, get to it when you want to. Get to it when it feels right. Get to it when your spirit tells you to. You will hear that stuff when it's time for you to. And others will as well if you share it. So I, I believe in what I'm doing here, even though I'm this person that doesn't have a whole lot. I don't know where the Lord is taking me. I don't know if it gets much better. I hope it does. I pray it does. But I think it doesn't matter if it does because the things that I've been talking about should help you even if it don't. It, it's supposed to prepare you for even if you have to live a long life that ain't so great, you get the most out of it. That's what the message is. Because we are not always going to get to the Maldives from the toilet. Some of us are going to have to stay in the toilet. Some of us are only going to get out the toilet and just kind of stand on the porcelain. At the end of the day, the Lord will make it so that you feel okay with what you're doing. You will be most useful for what you're doing. And that is going to make him happy. And I think that's going to make us happy in the end. So I hope to make him happy. I hope to make myself happy. And I hope to be able to never find myself in situations where I'm at a disadvantage again. Let me get my help. Let me get my diagnosis. Let me get my whatever I'm going to get to be better. And get back to my life the way that I know I should with a new attitude about always being able to go out. About always being in the presence of others. About always being willing to shake new people's hands and let them see whatever light I have inside of myself. Um, as my sister said, she wants me to, to do. So that's what it is, man. I, I, I trust 
that God will find you in the best spirit when you hear these. Especially the ones that are not so positive. Because I've had some that I don't even want to go back to. I was so negative. But that you understand that I came back after that and part provided you some positivity multiple times over. I hope would be understood when I was going through my weakest times. Uh, my mind has always attacked me. Ever since I was a baby, I've been dealing with anxiety. A baby, literally. And I know this because I felt these fears all my life. And so I don't want people to think that it was only my trauma that made me anxious. I actually felt anxiousness before Connie even entered the equation. I want people to know that. This is true. And that's why I think my mental health concerns are a combination of something chemical and the trauma. Because I remember feeling trauma before that. I mean, uh, anxiety before that. I remember feeling anxiety uh, in my mother's arms as a baby. The fears of, of, of whatever, fear of her not being there it was already present before my consciousness even formed. So that's why I want people to say, these, understand these mental health things and these anxieties, some of them are spiritual. Some of, that, some of these demons have been attached to us since birth because they knew our purpose. You understand what I'm saying? And that's something I want to enter the equation as well for spiritual people. If you have a real purpose, the Lord knew what I was going to be about. He been, so the, the enemy's been trying to kill me the whole time. That's what you have to understand from a spiritual standpoint, especially those who have great purpose and great dreams and great um, works about them. You got to understand some of the most impactful people have been dealing with their own minds. Uh, uh, addiction, you know what I'm saying? Circumstances that otherwise pull their spirit away from good energy, all that. Some of the most famous and, and, and talented people have just suffered their lives and i know why that was it was because whatever it was that was supposed to be impactful uh in their lives to do good also had some demon attached to it that didn't otherwise want them to show the best example this is also something we try to coerce ourselves away from some, some of the most famous people today are struggling with bad energy struggling with with, with bad circumstances struggling with their with their mental health and their, and their uh, drugs or whatever alcoholism some of the most important impactful and influential people in the world are often not doing too well. You know what I mean? And I know why that is. I know why that is. It's because them demons knew their purpose from the jump. They knew their purpose. And what I'm telling you, there's a defense against that. I lived through that. Demons knew my purpose too. Trying to kill me too. Trying to get me to not feel comfortable in my own skin all life long. Trying to get me to feel like I couldn't address real solutions for situations all life long. And I assure you, it ain't stopped me from handling my purpose. Because the Lord was with me the whole time too And there's always a, 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 Something to meet that energy with And you can get those demons off you I believe that So that's what I encourage people to do man Get those demons off you Do the work spiritually to make sure that your heart is in the right place So that you can be welcoming of the blessings That will allow you to get those demons off you Do the good works, do the good deeds Get yourself in the space where you can get the help you need For all of us to see That'll really defeat those demons because they want you to self-destruct in the presence of everyone else. So we walk away saying, that's what our path is going to be. That's what happens. That's what success looks like. See, that's another thing. Satan wants people to be quiet and be in a corner, not influencing others. So if we think success is equated to pain and sadness, if we think success is equated to our downfall in any way, there will be people who don't look for success because of that. I'm one of them for a long time. I didn't want the people behind the curtain, so to speak, to have my voice control what it is I'm doing and all that. And as a result, I never helped myself out of a circumstance that would otherwise make it so that this never took place. Satan won that battle. His imps and his, his demons won that battle because they kept me for 38 years from being present in the lives of you guys with all the different things that I could have helped you with that come out of this head. Not again. Never again. We're going to pick ourselves out of this situation. We're going to get as known as necessary for the Lord to do what it is that he wants to do through us. And that's, that's the intention. We ain't letting these demons that have been attached to us all our lives that have confused us, put us in positions to not feel strong, put us in a position to not want better for ourselves, put us in a position to be welcoming of the wrong energy by way of our sin nature and our jealousy and our anger and our hurt or whatever. We're going to take all of that energy and we're going to flip it on its axis. We're going to tell those demons they don't have any place in this place anymore, that our mind doesn't have space for them anymore, that our hearts only have place and space for productivity and and love and family and support 
and the openness to trusting something greater than ourselves. We're going to win the battles against us because we don't belong in hell. We were created by the creator to do great things to help propel the world to doing better, to handling circumstances that we struggle with better, to handling the difficulties that we come up against in life better. And we will not allow the enemy to defeat us in any way. So that's what I'm saying to everybody. If you if you are dreaming of being bigger, but if you struggle with addiction, I'm telling you, you can take the steps. You can take the steps to get over that and to make your image more responsible to the people that you're going to be seeing. While still maintaining your swagger and most what's comfortable to you, what makes you feel like yourself, with none of the extra negativity and self-destructive energy attached. You can do this. You can do what Herbo told us to do and see the solution and attack yourself to those solutions fully. And let the anxiety deal with itself in another part of the world. Because at the end of the day, those solutions are there because God is there. And if you haven't seen those solutions yet, it's because he's waiting for you to connect with him in such a way so he can open your heart to be in position to receive those blessings. To open your door to get yourself to those places that have received those blessings. To get away from the people that ultimately stifle you from receiving those blessings with their doubt with their inability to respond to you in ways that you need them to or whatever the case may be with their interests in, against you and their plans against you that maybe you don't know nothing about all of those things that we are talking about here we want the lord to put some type of defense around us so we can be the best we can be in our lives people plotting against us people trying to figure out whatever the heck we're going to do next so they can do something else all of those things we are playing protection over at this time because we understand our health our mental health is a lot of that is determined by how you handle the things that are outside of our control. Our intake of trauma and how we are quicker to turn to you a lot of times has to do with how well we are doing in the life around us. So put us with your people. Surround us with your energy. Put us in a mindset to be your person so that we're not hurting others with that same energy as to which they would have to pray us away. I ask that you put us in a position to be your people, to have your people around us and to put that community in our lives for the betterment of our circumstances. And if we're in a position of, of advantage, if we're so blessed as to be able to have a lot, put it in our hearts to be able to responsibly give what it is that we can so that we don't overextend ourselves to where we never want to do it again but that we do enough so that we can feel proud of ourselves and help others who would need it in jesus name amen that's the type of prayers that we're praying right now if we have addiction we're going to turn some of that money that we put into our addiction and we're going to put it into the solution that'll help us overcome that addiction we're going to put ourselves in a position to volunteer so that we can help others put themselves in a position to overcome their demons if they don't know of suggestions from which to do so we're going to go forward and we're going to get our education even though we're afraid of whatever it is that may be in the way of us ultimately passing those tests if we're afraid of taking tests that's okay because we're going to face those fears and we're going to we're going to pass those tests we're going to do a homework if we don't retain the information very well that's fine we're going to take on better breathing techniques that allow us to take on more oxygen so that our minds can retain more information as necessary step outside and get a break if you're overwhelmed with what it is you're faced with right now at work it's okay to take 30 seconds to praise god when you're taking on the worst of things because you best believe the next 30 seconds after you finish making those praises you're going to feel that much better know it know it like you know your name if you're in a situation where maybe you need to just get out of a bad relationship maybe somebody is is, is threatening you or putting you in a position to feel like your safety is in danger you put god on that if the world can't help you put god on it watch him open the doors that allow you to either cope with your circumstance better or just open up those doors so you ain't got to be in that circumstance no more he can do things he can do things he can move things around i promise you he can maybe it's and I don't want to speak nothing into existence, but I just allow my creative mind to go. Maybe somebody's in the way. Maybe they're, they're standing tall, strong in the presence of their, their circumstance and they're in the way of you getting what it is that's meant for you. Don't worry about trying to move them. Don't worry about trying to take the energy inside of you to move them out the way. You take that energy inside of you and you point it toward the Lord so he'll give you a different way. So that you don't trespass against somebody that will ultimately have blowback on you taking on the worst of energy. And that you don't do anything that will otherwise have you off timing what it is he wants you to do while you otherwise worried about them. Don't worry about them. Let them stand in whatever space they're in. If they get to be triumphant right now, whether it's due to them or not, 
don't focus on that. Focus on what you need to focus on so that you can get toward what it is you should actually want. Because if you want the wrong things, it's going to lead to the wrong results. You don't want what they have. You want what God has because he wants you to have something better than what it is you're looking at. And if Satan wants you to focus on that, try to take it from somebody else. Don't do it. Go there. So that's what's on my heart immediately. <laughs> Because a lot of us want what other people have. Sometimes people that take things from us, they're supposed to be giving back to us, and they ain't. Sometimes people in our position, they got our job. Maybe we've been working hard for this job, and they somebody cousin. Now they in there, and they, you know what I mean? It's all bad. But look, that energy is going to be met with something. You don't want that position because those people who gave them that position are in trouble now because they shouldn't have did that. And they're going to have to take back the blowback of doing things the wrong way. You stood on what it is you're supposed to stand on, and now the Lord is going to put you in a position to take on what it is you're supposed to have. Now, it is what, not what it is you were aiming for, because what it is you were aiming for doesn't have the foundation that ultimately will give you what it is that you need. And that's what the Lord's secrets are to things that we don't need but ab absolutely want. It doesn't come with anything good. It don't come with solutions. It don't come with... Uh, that dream life that you're looking for, what it comes with is something that's going to make it so that because you did what you did, now you deserve the worst things. You may find yourself in the Maldives for doing that person wrong. You may find yourself in a good place for doing that person wrong, but you ain't going to stay in that place for long. And you're not going to enjoy yourself there as much as you should because you did wrong getting there. Let them have that burden. If they did you wrong, let them have that to themselves. I'm not going to do nothing to have me deserving what you deserve for doing me that way. I'm not going to do it. So now when I do you wrong, now we're both deserving. It don't be even in God's eyes. It's going to be even in your head. And then them demons are going to be agreeing with you. But they ain't going to be even in God's eyes because he told you what you need to do. You need to be turning to him while not focusing on them. So not only can you get what it is you're supposed to get in a positive light, but you can leave them on that island by themselves to take on what it is they're going to be taking on. You go on that island, try to fight them for taking from you what it is they took from you. Guess where you at? You're in the same island that they on. Don't be there. Don't be there. Revenge is going to require you to be in their space. You don't want to be in their space because they got something coming for what it is that they did to you. And you don't want to be hit by it. <laughs> That's why revenge is his, man. It ain't as simple as, all. Oh, we just got to turn the other cheek and be soft. No, man. I don't want to be on the island that gets bombed because you're due to get bombed for what you did to me. Hell no. I'm getting away from you and I'm going to go peace far, I'm somewhere far away doing what the Lord wants me to do, helping people totally different, being in positions to receive totally different blessings, being in positions to be in totally different positions that are much better for me while you're taking on the consequences that are coming your way for doing what you did. Nah, ain't going to be me there. So that's what I want to tell people, man. Occupy your space. Don't worry about what somebody else got. If it was meant for you, it's not meant for you. You understand what I'm saying? If it was meant for you and you didn't get it, it wasn't meant for you. But that you now have an opportunity to go somewhere else will lead you toward exactly what's meant for you. So go there. No resistance. That's why I'm at, like, look, 10 days from now, I want to be gone. If they give me an opportunity to be gone three days from now, I'm out. If I know where I need to go, I'm not going to be staying here. You know what I mean? If, I, if someone says, yo, we have an opportunity for you to move in. I'm moving in today. Like, t right now. Like, Brandon, we got an address for you, man. Um, can you move in by 1230? I'm calling. I'm, I'm walking down to the U-Haul place. I'm loading it up. I'm throwing stuff away. I'm cleaning stuff. I'm telling you. All I need is a place to go, and I'm there with a new attitude to walk out the house every day at 1.30 to fix my situation, ultimately propel me to wherever the Lord wants me to go. That's what I'm committed to at this point. So it's like I'm not going to let the demons that kept me in this space all this time to allow me to get this bad stay in place. Nor am I going to let the demons that allow me to be in that routine of always letting this happen over and over again stay in place because I built something to let this go around. I stood on something the right way this go around. I was trying to get my AMC shares up to a point where I could have a way to help a lot of people with what it is I was doing. And it just hasn't manifested yet. And throughout the course of this process, while I'm trying to address these problems in Jesus' name, he could send that thing up and give me all that I need at any time. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm just like, look, I'm on a walk in the faith because I know that even though this could literally take me all the way out of my position... I never deviated from the Lord in the process. I started the position with the Lord. I struggled with the demons that were always there. And I got to a point where I was strong enough to face them even in the presence of great circumstances that are unknown. I'm not dropping my shares because I've given up on the play. I've never felt more confident that the play was more worthy because I've given it this much. I've given it this much. And when I look around, I still see apes saying, we're holding, been holding the whole time, never going to stop. I ain't never giving up on this. I'm never giving up on the idea that 
our financial market deserves some balances that don't allow us to have our money dissipate into places where otherwise people can duplicate money endlessly and not share it with people who don't have anything. I do not see myself as a failure in regards to attaching my, some, myself to something that should be stood on all life long if necessary. All life long, what, two years, three years? I'm going to stand on this for 70 years if the Lord gives me life because at the end of the day, these people are doing things that are not right in their way and that money is needed all over the world and they're not sharing it. They're lining their pockets with it, get bigger and bigger and God knows what they really have planned but it ain't of God and I can tell you that from within this man right now. Whatever they're doing in regards to that stock market with these hedgies and all this stuff, the short selling and all that, playing with the stock, reverse stock split, trying to get us to hurry up and get out of the position because they're going to stock split and that's going to make it go down even further. All of that is, is satanic energy. All of that is meant to provide anxiety to the people who are holding and ultimately get us to get out of here so they can continue funding whatever they're funding endlessly. It is evil. And so I'm telling you, I ain't walking away from that because the Lord put it in my heart to stay in that no matter what my mindset is. And as I'm telling you all these beautiful things about the Holy Spirit, he's telling me to hold. He's telling me to hold my shares to the best of my ability and understand that it was never any mistakes about this. He wasn't going to send this up when I needed it to. He was going to send it up when the world was ready for it. And that comes. That is in due time. So I appreciate the Lord not doing it on my time. I don't need it to be done on my time. I just need him to help me address my problem so I never fall back into these circumstances. I don't need to fall back into this. Never again. And if I get all the money I need before addressing these problems, that's exactly what will happen. I will fall into a space where this will continue. I want the help I need. I want the circumstance to fall into place. I want to earn my way back up to I have my confidence where it needs to be so I can make great decisions what it is with what it is that's coming my way. If I stay the way that I am, those decisions will not be good. And I probably end up falling into worse consequences. So let that be the lesson there for all of us. Don't ask for the Lord to give you something that's going to make your life easy. If while your life is as it is, you're not in a position to be as mature as you need to be, as independent as you need to be, as focused and intelligent as you need to be. If the Lord isn't going to give you some grandiose thing, make sure that you welcome him to make you the person that will best be ready to keep it and let go of it if necessary. So that you can survive whatever what may and most importantly do your best to hold on to it and let it go where it needs to go in the right way. If the Lord gave me all that I was looking for without helping me, all I would do was get worse. And I know that all I would do is find ways of making this my reality more so, which ain't it. <laughs> so that's why I want to encourage people to understand. I may not be getting what it is that I want to make my life easier, but easier is not going to make my life stronger. And strong is what I ultimately need. I need strength. So that's what I'm telling people, man. It ain't about sitting here being mad at God for not sending that thing up, making it so that my efforts feel like they're in vain, making it so that I have very little to what I have. That just means I have to apply more faith. That just means it requires me to be a bit more faithful, a bit more holy to get through this. A bit less uh, lustful, a bit less angry, a bit less quick to, you know, walking away from God in any way to get through this. If he would have let me have such and such amount of money in this situation, I'd be like, okay, well, I'd just throw money at it and never get close to God. He'd never tell me any of this to tell y'all I'm just living an empty life that continues on the path. I might get a PlayStation 5, start playing 2K for the next seven hours, wait for all of my money that, that's going to come to disappear. Maybe it takes three years, maybe it takes five years, maybe it takes less. But the point is, that's all I would have did with Moaz if the Lord wouldn't allow me to address this. So if I'm to be looking at this as for what's better for me to become the man I want to be, to become the father that I hope to become, it's going to be going through these hard times right here. That's going to get me there, not him making it easy for me, bestowing upon me all the money in the world and then proceeding to watch me go out there and continue to be in the same person. Being the same person was susceptible to demons that woke me up this morning trying to kick my behind. And what do I usually do with those demons? I just hide under the bed, probably go to lust, probably go to something that'll make no sense and ultimately end up waiting for the sheriff to pull me out of here, as to which I lose everything. That is not how I want to move. That's what making things easy for me did. I don't need that no more. I won't want things to be harder either. I just want things to be a bit more stable. And because of it, I want to go into spaces I need to go to get solutions that I need. <laughs> so that's what I'm telling everybody else, man. Solutions are available. People are out there every day helping people who need. And I can be one of those people to help those people. And I ain't waiting for help to do that. I'm turning on this camera and I'm giving you what I need to give others in order to help them. And so that's how I feel, man. That's exactly how I feel. I'm, I'm going to address my problems, you know, contact more people. If, 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 the, if the links come my way, obviously continue to, to make decisions on things that I own. Probably marked out some of the stuff that I have priced up on OfferUp. 
try to see if I can get it sold a little bit quicker. Um, you know, and then just spend the next several days trying to be, be who I've been, man. Be committed to just taking these walks every day. They've been the most fruitful thing in my life over the last four years is going out on these days, uh, every day walking. I, I, I'm telling you, I ain't felt better. Never. Maybe never, honestly. And so as I walk around continuing to minister the word of God into my channel, I respect that I haven't done my Laker videos. I miss doing them. I want to do them, but I just ain't got nothing to say in regards to the Lakers. There's nothing going on. I want to get to the draft, do all the draft stuff, rather. But the day I have to be out is the day the draft is going to be there. So I just ask the Lord, give me a couple hours in the midst of my hectic life to allow me to do what it is that I love to do. And judging by the fact that he put it in my heart to listen to that mock draft that I did a couple nights ago when I was considering more so thinking about what needs to be done, it just helps me understand that he knows what my interests truly are, what my passions truly are, and he supports those passions. He supports them from on high. So I welcome the opportunity to be able to watch the draft and do content on the draft and enjoy next season just like I've been enjoying it. And maybe be able to elevate my channel to such a way that I'm really doing what it is that I love to do on a much higher scale. So that's what I hope. You know, we're praying for that. We're working toward that. And we're being consistent on this channel with hopes of helping you understand how serious we are and passionate that we are about that, even in the midst of trials. We want to give you content. We want that content to be of substance. We want it to be entertaining for the most part. And we also hope that you feel um, no obligation, no obligation whatsoever. So that's what I got to say. I think that will conclude my therapy session. I, I feel a lot better, man. I feel a lot better talking to the Lord and thinking that I'm helping somebody else, hoping that his voice will enter my and then allow my voice to enter your heart. That gives me hope. And so that's what it is. Um, Everything is going to be fine in your life. If nobody's told you that today, if nobody has assured you the reassurance necessary to tell you that things are going to work out, they are. They're going to work out. I believe that what he brings you will be custom for you. I believe that if you get only a certain amount, it'll be because he wants you to apply a certain level of discipline or strength to receive it. I believe you'll be better for it, and that amount won't receive be received as small next time you receive it in that increment, if that makes any sense. The first time, you're going to be offended by getting that amount. The next time, it's going to be that much easier if you receive it in graciousness. And maybe next time, it won't be as much, as little as it is that it was if that makes any sense so if i only give you three dollars today don't be mad about three dollars today because tomorrow i'm gonna give you three dollars and it's gonna be much easier for you to receive it that way so that's just what it is conditioning of the mind let's be better about what we want let's be better about what we're asking for let's be more broad about what we allow ourselves to ask for in prayer so that the lord can bring us so many more variables that make us happy always remember you can start in the toilet end in the maldives so if he doesn't give you what you want please believe it can lead to what you really want in the end. BDL 44, I thank you all for watching.